Yeah, I think there's often a misconception that code of e ethics is a list of rules, and if you actually look at ours, it's not. There's some at the end, particularly, but the first half is much more about this, the core of this commitment that we make. And I think, for me, that's fundamentally about a realisation of what, of what we're there for and what we do. And that is, um, we, we work with people, young people, um, adult learners, communities, in order to, to help them find their own life, in order for them to, 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 to feel like their life belongs to them and the decisions that they make have got some traction. That they don't have to just somehow survive what life throws at them, but they can have some kind of power in that process. So I think that's what we do. And there's two essential components for that for me. One of those, as it says in the, in the, in the Code of Ethics, that the constituent is our primary client. It is unethical for us to ever act against the interests of the people that we work for. Um, and I think that is not something that is general amongst the field of professionals that we work with. And I think the other thing that we see is because we understand this process of life as being a social thing, that this happens in people's social contexts. So it's not an internal therapy thing that we're doing, but we're helping people live in their world, what the Americans call the life world um, of people. So I think those two things, the person as the primary client and the, the involvement in their social context is the way that I would see it. Um, in terms of the way, some of the ways that, we, that we've used the code, code of ethics, I think it can be really useful um, in understanding partnership working situations, because as, as I um, have said earlier, that it's not there's lots of things that we share with other professions, but other commitments are quite different. And sometimes that can lead us feeling isolated or feeling like we're just in disagreement all the time or we don't understand what other people are saying or they seem stupid or conservative or all sorts of things like that. And one of the exercises I've been through with people is to, is to get them to role play different professions and give them a copy of the code of ethics for their respective um, profession and argue about a decision. The one we used was, um, was about the location of a new youth centre and whether that would be on the high street or whether it be in a kind of a semi-industrial um, area on the outskirts of town and get people to argue that from the position of their individual codes of ethics. And that's really helps with understanding and it helps us to understand what the process is so even if there's disagreement it's not because someone's being obstructive necessarily, it can be that too, um, but it might be that they're actually coming from a different set of ethical commitments.